Hi students, uh, this is chapter 5, lesson 4, and the topic today is terminating and repeating decimals. And a lot of what we're going to see today is stuff that we've actually already done. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of today uh, has to do with long division, which we've done, and we're going to practice the steps of long division today. Uh, divide, multiply, subtract, check, and bring down. Uh, but before we do that, the first big idea that I want to talk about today is a rational a rational number. Uh, a rational number <coughs> is a number a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction And to represent that, uh, I'm going to say A over B. A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. So it, it's something that can be written in this form. And I'm going to use variables just to represent uh, a number over another number. And the only condition is the bottom number, in this case I'm going to say b, b cannot equal 0 because uh, this line also represents divide and you, it's impossible to, to divide by 0. So that number can't be 0. But a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. And most every number you can think of is a rational number. So I'm going to highlight this. This is one of our key ideas, key vocabulary. A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. Okay, can be written as a fraction. Notice I forgot the word B. is a number that can be written as a fraction. Here are some examples. A whole number 6. Well, can you write that as a fraction? You sure can. You could say 6 over 1. So 6, it's a rational number. How about 4.5? Is that a rational number? Right now it's a decimal, but could I write it as a fraction? I sure could. I could change that into 9 halves. So this is an improper fraction. Remember to solve that we would say how many twos go into nine? Four times. That gets us up to eight. And we've got one left which is a half left which is the same thing as four and a half and that's also 4.5. What about the mixed number two and one-third? Can I, is it possible to write this as a fraction? Sure is. If I mad face this, I would do 3 times 2 makes 6, plus 1 is 7. I can change that number into 7 thirds. So these are all examples of a rational number. 6, rational number. 4.5, rational number. 2 and a third, rational number. And because the reason is I can write it as a fraction if I wanted to. And of course, this would be true for negative numbers as well. I could say negative 6. I would say negative 6 over 1. I could make all of those negative as well. All right, so to change any rational number into a decimal. Whoops. I don't want to write with a highlighter. To change any rational number into 
a decimal dot 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 to change any rational number into a decimal or to ch let me change this word rational number let's say we write it as a fraction to change any fraction into a decimal hopefully some of you remember what that we've talked about that before how do you change any fraction into a decimal here's what you do divide numerator No, oh, I totally messed that up, didn't I? Divide numerator by denominator. Divide numerator by denominator. And that is something that we've talked about before. And I'm going to write uh, that in a couple ways. Uh, here's a fraction, written as a fraction, a over b. That also means a divided by b. This line also represents divide. We've talked about this before. These are all ways of showing division. a divided by b a divided by b, and of course, if we are going to long divide, we have to write it like that. And remember our steps for long divide, divide, multiply, subtract, check, and bring down. <clears throat> this is what we're going to be doing today. Changing any rational number into a fraction is this, divide numerator, by denominator. And I'm going to highlight that. Change rational number into a decimal is this. Divide numerator by denominator. Something we've looked at before. So let's do a couple of examples. change to a decimal the following one sixth one sixth how would we change that to a decimal we would divide numerator by denominator and we're going to use long division steps so one divided by six that means the one is going to go on the inside so it would look like this Now this is something that we've done before, and how many times does 6 go into 1? Zero times. It doesn't go into it at all. In order for me to continue, I need to add a decimal point, which we've talked about before, previous chapters. That decimal point goes straight up in my answer. Now I can add as many zeros as I choose, and I'm just going to keep dividing. So now I'm going to divide how many sixes go into 10. One time. One times six is six. Subtr that's my multiplying. Subtract. I'm following this now over and over. It's a loop. 10 subtract six is four. I can add another zero. Bring that down. How many times does six go into 40? I look at my multiplication chart or just use my math facts six times and then I'm gonna multiply six times six makes 36 subtract 40 take away 36 I get four add another zero and I get 40 again well now you can probably notice you're gonna get stuck in a loop how many sixes go into 40 it's the same thing answer is was right here another 6. 6 times 6 is 36. This is just going to keep going in a loop. It's going to be stuck. It's going to, this is what that is called. It is going to be a repeating decimal. It's going to repeat. So 
This decimal, if I kept dividing, would go 0 0.16666666. It would just keep going forever. 6 would repeat. <clears throat> so for a repeating decimal, my answer would look like this. <clears throat> my answer would be 0 0.16. Six, and I would put a bar over just the part that repeats. The one does not repeat. The six repeats. So my answer would look like this. 0 0.16 with a bar over the six. So that's what my final answer would look like. And again, this is an example of a repeating, or no, Yes, a repeating decimal. The 6 is going to repeat. I indicate repeating with that bar over whatever repeats. Sometimes it is a, uh, it's more than one number repeats. Right here, it's just the 6 that repeats. You might find a pattern where the answer would be 1.8. 38383. Three, eight, three. The 8 and the 3 repeat, you'd put a bar over the 8 and the 3. So you put a bar over whatever it is that repeats, and that could be one or of many numbers that repeat. Okay, another example we're going to look at is change this into a decimal. Negative 3 fourths. <clears throat> Same strategy, divide numerator by denominator. 3 divided by 4. And the negative sign is just going to mean that my answer at the end, uh, I can ignore the negative sign for right now. Can long divide 3 divided by 4, and then because of that negative sign, my answer when I'm all done is going to be negative. So 3 divided by 4. 3 divided by 4. Going to look like that. Follow my steps. How many times does 4 go into 3? That's none. Decimal point, straight up. Decimal point in the quotient in my answer. I can add as many zeros as I want. How many 4s fit into 30? 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract, I get 2. Add another 0. Back to divide. How many 4s fit into 20? Well, this time the answer is 5. And this time, 5 times 4 is 20. This decimal ends, finishes. I don't have anything left over. No more numbers to bring down. I have 0. This is called a terminating decimal. In other words, it terminates, it ends, it finishes does not keep going in a loop like this one. So this is an example of terminating decimal. Now, one final thing, my answer for this, because it was negative, my answer is negative. So my final answer is not 0 0.75, it's 0 0.75, but it's negative. So my answer would look like this, 0 0.75 negative. OK, so this is an example of a repeating decimal. So really today, what you're going to be doing is long dividing. Yay, you are, you are all long dividing pros. So really today, uh, it's a repeat of, of something we've done lots of practice on, long dividing. And sometimes you're going to get a repeating decimal, and you're going to put a bar over the part of the decimal that repeats. Other times, you're going to get a terminating decimal, a decimal that finishes, and you're going to write down the answer, uh, whatever it is you get. If it is a negative number, like negative three-fourths. You can ignore the negative sign when you're doing the long dividing, and when you're done, just add the negative sign. So really, uh, 
what's new today is a rational number. Uh, we talked about that a long time ago briefly, but again, it's a number that can be written as a fraction. And two different types of decimals, terminating and repeating decimals. Repeating repeats, terminating does not. It finishes or it terminates. This is what you will be practicing today. Uh, long dividing, repeating, and terminating decimals. Okay, before we go wrap it up, here is the hidden treasure for lesson four. It is this puzzle. Okay, so once again, that's the puzzle for uh, lesson four. You have to, in order to win, you have to solve that puzzle, and you also must have chap all chapter notes and this lesson four assignment completed when I draw names. Well, that wraps it up for lesson four. I will see you again soon for chapter five, lesson five.